All right, y'all get your choir books and turn to page 15. Page number 15. Had a couple requests out this morning and today, so we'll try to make sure we get them. Page number 15. Y'all stand. There's a river somewhere that's called Jordan, and they say that it's deep and it's wide, and they say that the king and the baker on that shore will stand side by side. At the crossing of the Jordan, why should I be afraid? There'll be someone there who loves me to guide me across the river to pass like a dream in the night and my soul will awake in the morning in regions of endless delight at the crossing of the Jordan why should I be afraid? There'll be someone there who loves me to guide me across the river. I just say I appreciate uh, two Jeffs here that bring the word, and I appreciate Bill being willing to come up and bring a word too on Sunday night. I enjoy all three of them. So uh, sometimes I just like I've had a well, I've had a, I've had a, a busy month, worked a lot of hours as always at Christmas. So I'm just for it, and I said, boy, this morning I woke up and said I'd love to hear somebody besides me preach tonight. I sure would. I, I don't know when the last time Jeff would preach, but uh, only time I ever got cross threaded at Jeff was with his kids, and he beat me up in the church parking lot. But they say they did too. He, they say time heals everything. He's, I'm still healing on that one, but anyway, he don't remember. But I didn't. I started the fight. He finished it. I just put it that way. But it was my fault. I started it. I, I underestimated him and I overestimated me. But come on, Jeff. We love you. Love your family. I know you got a good word. Looking forward to being fed tonight. I'll be in the book of Ephesians chapter 6 to start out with. I'll be in a couple places, but that's going to be the main main one there. Yeah, nothing like being put on the spot this morning, calling when you're fixing to leave for church. Won't know if I'd do it for tonight. So I told him. Is a good thing that I had something in mind, that's for sure. I said, I, I never know when he's going to do that to me, so I try to keep something available at all times if I can. So I've had it for a while and uh, just waiting for the time to do it. And uh, tonight, I, the, I titled it, Are You Standing on the Rock? So the title in the messenger was a little bit different because I had my stuff at home 
and I didn't, I couldn't remember the way I titled it when he was asking me what if I'd preach or not. So when I got here and <laughs> Kelly wanted to know if I had a title for the sermon, that was the closest I could come to it. I read it in the book today, and I said, that ain't what I said. So anyway, it's close. It says, are you standing on the rock? And that rock, I mean, is by Jesus. And that's sure who we need to be putting our faith in today and not anything else but that. But I'm going to start reading uh, Ephesians chapter 6, verse 10 here. And uh, it says, Finally, my brethren, be strong in the Lord and in the power of His might. And, you know, the one thing that we have to look you know, to forward to and nothing else. We got to be strong in the Lord for everything that's going on in this day and time. You got to be strong in the Lord because that's where we get all our power to do anything from is from Him when He gives us the breath each and every day to get up and go. We got to look to Him for the answers there for, for the day. Uh, verse 11, it says, Put on the whole armor of God that you may be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. For we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of the darkness of this world, against spiritual wickedness in high places. And man, I can't help but think, especially what's going on and everything now, the spiritual wickedness to me in the high places up there in Washington, D.C., and it really any other place that's ahead of a town, city, or whatever, when, when people's doing the things that they're doing today, I really think of that. And uh, I go on to 13 here. It says, Wherefore, take unto you the whole armor of God, that ye may be able to stand, withstand in the evil day, and having done all, to stand. And I'll stop there just a minute. And the first thing that we need to do is we need to stand up and we need to walk like Jesus walked the way he did when he was here on this earth. And I'm going to read another little passage here and do, do a little bit more explaining. You can turn if you want to, but it's 11 verses here and it's uh, Matthew chapter 4 and verse 1 through 11 is what I'm going to be reading on it. Uh, but we got to stand up and walk like Jesus did here and listen to what, what he did. It says, Then was Jesus led up of the Spirit into the wilderness to be tempted of the devil. And we're no different than him. If Jesus got tempted, you better believe we're going to get tempted. And uh, he's there day in, day out. And that's why we got to be strong in Jesus and stand on that solid rock that he is so that we can uh, put on the armor of God and withstand the wiles of the devil. So we got to be strong in Jesus. We got to stand on that rock. Uh, verse 2, and when he had fasted 40 days and 40 nights, he was afterward and hungered. So he got hungry after that long period of time there. And when the tempter came to him, he said, If thou be the Son of God, command that these stones be made bread. But he answered and said, It is written, Man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceedeth out of the mouth of God. And I really get out of that right there. It is written. So Jesus said it. We've got it to read. That's what we got to do each and every time that the devil comes and tempts us with something. We got to say, devil, it is written. You know, and then whatever else we say, it's in this word of God right here. Anything that we need, it's in, in this Bible. And we just got to stand up to the devil and, and, and tell him that. That's why my first number outline there it was stand up we got to stand up to that old devil and all the wickedness going on now uh, verse 5 it says then the devil taketh him up into the holy city and setteth him on a pinnacle of the temple and saith unto him if thou be the son of god cast thyself down for it is written he shall give his angels charge concerning thee and in their hands they shall bear thee up lest at any time thou dash thy foot against the stone. Now see if y'all pick this up like I did. Even the devil himself, he, he even knows God's word because he told, told Jesus right there, for it is written. He was telling Jesus that it was written. So if the old devil knows the word, we need to know the word for sure so we can be able to battle him with because he already knows all the little tricks and, 
and trays there to get us into some kind of a mess. So we got to know. We got to be strong in the, in the Lord and stand up for Him. Uh, verse number 7 says, Jesus said unto him, It is written again, Thou shalt not tempt the Lord thy God. So he tells him one more time, It is written. It's in that word. It's in the word of God. And again, the devil taketh him up into an exceeding high mountain and showed him all the kingdoms of the world and all the glory of them and saith unto him, All these things will I give thee if thou wilt fall down and worship me. And I really, I always got a kick out of that every time I read it because the old devil, he thinks he owns it all, but God already tells us in his word, he's the one that owns it all. I mean, we owe everything we have is to him because he's the one that gives to us. And, uh, but the old devil, he, he wanted Jesus to think he owned it all, and that's the way he'll do with us. He'll try to trick us and tell him it don't belong to the devil, it belongs to God. It's, it's all of Jesus's. So we just have to break down there and tell him again, oh devil, it is written, you know, in, in God's word. And uh, see, I think verse 10 said, Then saith Jesus unto him, Get thee hence, Satan, for it is written, Thou shalt worship the Lord thy God, and him only shalt thou serve. Then the devil leaveth him, and behold, angels came and ministered unto him. So he told him one more time, you know, devil, devil, get behind me and uh, leave me alone, for it is written. So in, in God's word there. And, uh, you know, the devil, he left him alone, and he'll leave us alone for a little time. We might be in that little battle, but he's always there. And he's just waiting, you know, seeking whom he may devour there he's walking around he's looking for the one that's going to be weak and where he can get somebody out so we got to stay strong we got to stand up and fight for the lord jesus on there all right now i'm gonna flip back to philippians i got so much stuff wrote down on here i'm hoping i can keep it in order uh my next one would be uh it's still in ephesians 6 and i'll pick up with verse 14 it says Stand, therefore, having your loins girt about with truth, and having on the breastplate of righteousness, and your feet shod with the preparation of the gospel of peace. Above all, taking the shield of faith, wherewith ye shall be able to quench all the fiery darts of the wicked, and take the helmet of salvation and the sword of the Spirit, which is the word of God." And praying always with all prayer and supplication in the Spirit and watching thereunto with all perseverance and supplication for all saints. So I want to go back a little bit here. Uh, that sword of the, of the Spirit there, which is the Word of God. So this 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 Bible we're reading out of tonight and I'm sure all of y'all got with you. That's what we got to fight the old devil with. And all the wicked, we got to be in this word of God. And every answer we have or need is going to be in this word right here. But I want to go back to 14 there. It says, Stand therefore having your loins girt about with truth and with having on the breastplate of righteousness, which is doing the right thing, doing that which is good. And there, the, my next thing was we got to stand on the gospel of Jesus. And that means we stand on there that he went to the cross. He died. He bled and died on that cross for each and every one of us. He carried all of our sins, put them on his back, nailed him to that cross. And then he was buried in a borrowed tomb. And then three days later, he rose from the dead just like he told everyone that he would. So we got to stand on that gospel of Jesus there. And then um, in John 14, 6... It's Jesus said unto him, I am the way, the truth, and the life, and no man cometh unto the Father but by me. So we got to stand on that gospel because Jesus, he is the way, the truth, and the life. Nobody comes to God except through going through Jesus first because we all going to have to bow that knee before Jesus. You know, he's going to be the judge of all of us there, and we all, no matter what they do here on this earth when he calls us home we all gonna have to bow before him 
And he's going to hopefully say, well done, my good and faithful servant, to the ones that are saved. And if you're not saved, I beg you tonight to get right with the Lord and ask him to come into your heart and save you because the only thing you're assured of is to, to be in hell with the devil and his angels there. So, and then my last point here on number three, uh, I'm going to be reading, uh, pick back up in 19, it says, And for me, that utterance may be given unto me, that I may open my mouth boldly to make known the mystery of the gospel, for which I am an ambassador in bonds, that therein I may speak boldly as I ought to speak. So every one of us in here today, we're, if you're saved, we're all an ambassador of Christ. So we all stand up for him. We all tell the story of Jesus, and that's what we should do. And he tells us also that we need to speak boldly as we ought to speak. So don't hide back the truth. You know, you know be strong with it. You know, keep going for Jesus because he's the reason that makes everything go the way it should because he's the one that's ultimately in control of everything. No matter what happens in this world, he's the one that's ultimately in control of everybody. So my last point there would have been we need to stand out. And uh, 1 Peter chapter 2 and 11, he tells us there, it says we're going to seem like pilgrims and strangers on this earth you know, walking around while we're on this earth because we're a peculiar people. So, and the more that you look at the world, the more that you can see just how peculiar we are because, I mean, I get amazed too by Bill's, some of Bill's facts when he said the other day on, in his Sunday school class about, you know, the people that believed in God I just took it for granted, I guess, growing up little and then going to church all, all my life. You know, I'm just thinking everybody's like me and everybody goes to church. But, boy, I tell you, it's not true. I mean, and, and really all you got to do is, is look, especially during ball season and stuff, when we come by the Harbin's Park down there and we'll be on the way to Sunday school, that thing can be full sometimes. And it's like on a Sunday. I'm talking about, or even on a Wednesday, it's going to be slap full of people, and you got to wonder, where are these people going to spend eternity? Because they're not really, to me, they're not concerned with what matters the most. I mean, there's nothing wrong with playing ball, now don't get me wrong, but I mean, on Sunday morning at 9 o'clock, and they're already down there playing ball, I mean, something just not right, you know. I mean, I might could handle that once, you know, in a while if it's something special, okay, but... Man, you, if it's Sunday, you need to be in church. Amen. So, I mean, and that's why we are such a peculiar people because there's so many people that don't even, they don't even acknowledge God. They don't even have a clue, you know, about God or what's going on. And, and it's just a shame that if they don't hear the word of God somewhere and come to know him, that they only have one place to go, and that's with the devil and, and you know, all his angels in hell. And that's a sad place to have to go and, and spend the rest of eternity but we gotta we gotta speak boldly for him and then stand up for him all right and then i'm gonna read one last scripture here in the isaiah 28 and 16 it says therefore thus saith the lord god behold i lay in zion for a foundation a stone a tried stone a precious cornerstone a sure foundation. He that believeth shall make haste. All right, so tonight I had to ask you and anybody that might be watching on Facebook, are you, do you have that sure foundation? Do you have that, that rock, that tried and precious stone? Do you have him in your heart? Because that's where you got to have him. I mean, he lives, once you get saved, he lives within us. And we carry them everywhere we go. Now, I was telling the children this morning in Children's Church, now God loves each and every person that there is. He made them all. We're all created in his likeness. But there's just some people that's just not going to accept God, and that's just the plain truth. And so, but he loves us all no matter what. He died for all, but it's just a matter of who is going to accept him as their Savior. So... Tonight, we need to have 
that strong foundation, that tried stone, that precious cornerstone. Make him that cornerstone of your life. Put him in your heart. And you can never, ever go wrong as long as you got Jesus in your heart and you're standing on his side, no matter what. So tonight, do you want to say anything or you may go ahead and have more? I'm pretty early. I got through it. All right, well, that'll, well as y'all come, as Mark comes and they come back to the instruments there, um, just tonight, if you have any need, I know that uh, Brother Akins is really going through a tough time right now, and uh, he's really suffering. As Shannon talked to Melissa today and had both of us in tears, just bawling our eyes out. So uh, just be much in prayer for that. And, but there's one thing about Mr. Aikens, you don't have to worry about where he's going to be. And he's been saying for a long time, you know, he's ready to go. I don't know how long I've heard him. As long as he's been coming here, he's been saying he's ready to go. And, uh, but, I mean, it just, it just breaks your heart when you know that people are suffering, and especially him being a veteran, and she can't get him no help nowhere. And it's just such a sad thing. But there's one thing about it. Mr. Aikens has got that rock. In his heart. And I'm going to probably get tore up if I keep on going much longer thinking about it after today. But uh, I want each and every one of you and for anybody that might be listening to have that rock in their heart. And, that, and to put Jesus in your heart because he can do anything and everything for you if you'll just turn and trust him and give your life to him. But it all starts with you admitting that you're a sinner, that you're lost. Ask him to come into your heart and forgive you of your sins, and he'll save you. And just follow him and be baptized if you need to be baptized. And cause that's the, he commands us to do that also in his word. And uh, he'll make you a new creature. And all things will become new uh, for you if you just accept him. So if anybody has a need tonight, I'll meet you down here if you need to pray or if there's anything or if you don't, we'll just sing us a verse and we'll go home. But I, I got a lot out of that lesson, so I hope y'all got something out of it. But uh, I know we need to we need to stand. That's what I was going to do. Is I done closed it up a little too quick here. I was going to summarize it for us real quick. That's why I got them highlighted in yellow here. So I, I'm having to get back where I can see. My old eyes are starting to change a little bit finally on me. So... But we all, we need to all stand up for Jesus. So we need to walk like he did when he was here on this earth. And you know he never done anything wrong to anybody. He was always good to everybody. And that's the way we need to try to be. Then we need to stand on the gospel of Jesus. His cross, his burial, and his resurrection. We got to plant that in our heart. Know it and live it. And then we got to stand out. So we got we to gotta be a stranger in a foreign land there. But we got to stand out because we need to speak boldly about Jesus. We need to tell others about Jesus so that they can hear the Word of God, the Gospel of God. And hopefully they'll put that in their heart. It'll get in there somehow or another. And they can be saved and have the same feelings that we have and the same assurance of eternity that we all have here. And that's to ultimately be in heaven with Him for the rest of eternity. So... As we, all y'all can stand and we'll sing. And uh, if anybody needs anything, just come on down and pray, and we'll go from there. Brother Mark. All right, let me get this big book where I can see. 375, 375. Ah! 
after thine will While I am waiting Yielded and still Have thine own way, Lord Have thine own Try me, Master, today. Whiter than snow, Lord, wash me just now, as in thy presence. Um, Have I no way, Lord? Have I no way? Wounded and weary, help me, I pray. I were all power. Surely is thine. Touch me and heal me, save your divine.